All right, guys, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of an introduction to waves and graphs. Now, on each of these graphs, we're gonna do a couple of things. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna try to interpret what the graph is telling us. What is it talking about? Because we're gonna see a couple of different kinds of graphs. The second thing we're gonna look at is we're going to try to determine some of the things, some of those terminology things that we learned about in our previous units. So wavelength, frequency, amplitude, period, speed when possible. Now, sometimes some of these won't be possible given the information that we have. So we need to be aware of that and just recognize that some of these we won't be able to answer, but we're gonna talk about why we can or can't get that information from the graph, okay? So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and start with this first one. Let's try to interpret what the graph is telling us first. So we've got time on the x-axis. So something is happening as time passes. And then over here on the y-axis, we have the vertical position. So thinking about why would we have something that is changing its vertical position from its center to a max point, back to the center, down to a negative. So it's going vertical position, so it's going up and down over and over and over again as time passes. How would this connect to a wave? Well, hopefully you're thinking about that uh, image that I showed in class that drove a bunch of people nuts with the, uh, with the particles that were moving up and down and yet the energy of the wave was moving across the screen. This is a transverse wave where the particles moving up and down, yet the energy is going to be moving to the side. All right, now from this, we're going to try to determine some of these values. Now, the first thing it asks us to do is to determine the wavelength. Now, in order to do wavelength, we actually need to know how long the wave is in distance, in meters. Now, because this is just talking about the vertical position of a particle over time, we actually don't know how long the wave is. We just know what that one vibrating particle is doing. So we're not actually gonna be able to find the wavelength here. We can find the frequency, but in order to find the frequency, we're actually gonna skip ahead to the period here because we can find the period. We're gonna start with that. So the first maximum here, actually we, we can start here at the middle. We can start at zero. It goes up to a max, down to a min, and then back to where it started from. And so you can actually see there that the period is 20 seconds. All right, and you can see it starts there, it goes up, down, and back again. So it gets back to 40. So that's consistent. We have a period of 20 seconds. Now, it completes one cycle in that amount of time. From that, we can get the frequency. because We remember that the period is equal to one over the frequency, or that the frequency is equal to one over the period. It really doesn't matter which one of those you do, they're both the same. But we can go ahead and we can put 20 in for the period. So we go one divided by 20, and we get our frequency, which is going to be 0.05 hertz, all right, or cycles per second. Now, if it takes 20 seconds to complete a full period, it makes sense that we don't get through very many cycles in a second, okay? We can find the amplitude, right? The amplitude is gonna be pretty straightforward from our graph here. The amplitude is how far, what is the maximum displacement from the center? Well, the particle starts at zero, and then it goes all the way up to this position, which is up here at eight. And then it goes all the way down to that position at negative eight. And so from the center, it amplitude is eight. Now it doesn't give us units there, so we're just gonna say eight units. Whether that's centimeters or meters, we can't tell based off the graphs, so we'll just say eight, okay? Now, we're not gonna be able to find speed of the wave. We could find the speed of the particle, that's always changing. So we're not gonna be able to find speed of the wave. Now, if the question gave us a little bit more information, for example, if it said that the wavelength is 1.5 meters, now I'm just making this number up, if it gave us a value for the wavelength, now we can find the speed. Remember I said this at, one of the, at the end of one of those other videos that the speed is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. 
And since we have, if we're given the wavelength, which is 1.5 meters, and we calculated the frequency earlier, which was at 0 0.05, then we should just be able to multiply those together and we get that the speed, these are both in SI units, 1.5 meters and 0 0.05 hertz. And so if we do that, we should end up with 0 0.075 meters per second. And so that would be the speed of the wave, not the speed of the particle, because the speed of the particle changes as it goes up and down, but that would be the speed of the wave and how fast that energy is being transferred to the site. Okay, so there you go. Let's move on to the next one and see how it's the same and how it's different. So in this one, again, same thing, but notice that the axes are a little bit different this time. This time the X is in meters and the Y is also in meters. So they're both in distance. Now, what this is gonna represent then, this is gonna actually give us more of a snapshot of what the wave looks like. This is not as time passes, this is just what is the wave look like right now. And so this particle is up here at four meters, this particle is here at zero, this particle is down here at negative two, right? And so this could be demonstrating, again, a transverse wave, but now it's giving us a snapshot instead of giving us things associated with time. Now, from this, we can get the wavelength, right? We can take the first, from the first crest to there, and that looks like it's about three, but it's not time this time, it's three meters. And so my wavelength is gonna be 3.0 meters. The next question is for frequency. I can't actually get frequency from this because I don't know. I don't have anything with time, which means I'm not gonna be able to get frequency. I'm not gonna be able to get period, and I'm not gonna be able to get speed because to get speed, I need both frequency and wavelength. What I can do is I can calculate the amplitude, all right? Because this particle is still gonna start at zero. It's gonna go all the way up to four, and then it's eventually gonna go all the way down to negative four. So the amplitude there is going to be 4.0 meters because it goes up to a maximum of four meters from its center point. All right, now, just like we did with the other one, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna give you a value here and let's see if we can find the other things. So let's say that the frequency is about 30 hertz. All right, so vibrating back and forth 30 times in a second. So we now have the frequency. We can get the period because remember period is equal to one over frequency. So if the frequency is 30, then we can get the period, which is just one divided by 30 which is 0 0.0333 repeating seconds. Now, if it's able to go through 30 cycles in one second, it makes sense that the period of one cycle is very, very short in time. And so we've got the period. We should now also be able to get the speed because remember the speed is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And I made up a frequency, which is 30 hertz. And then I know the wavelength, which was three meters, which then I would get 90 meters per second. That's in SI units. This is in SI units. So when I put them in my calculation, I should then get a speed of 90 meters per second. Now, please remember the frequency is not given in the graph. That's why we have different kinds of graphs because some allow us to find some of these values and some allow us to find some of the other values. And that's an important part of this process, all right? Let's move on to the next one. So we have two more graphs here. Again, the hope is just that we can try to figure out whatever we can. These two actually go together, all right? So you'll notice that in the first graph over here on the left that we have on the y-axis a position and on the x-axis also a position, right? And so this is giving us kind of like that second graph this particle, it's here, a different particle is here, right? This is a snapshot. This is at time zero. So not, not only is it a snapshot, it tells us specifically that this is time zero, okay? Uh, in the second graph, it gives us a connection with, this is a very specific particle. This is the particle that was at one meter. Now, if you look at this first graph, look at that. 
See, at that point, it was at about 1.5 meters, which is where this particle is at time zero. And so these two graphs correlate, but one is giving us a snapshot of the graph at the beginning, and the second one is showing us what this particle is doing as time progresses. Now, from these two together, we should be able to answer all of the questions given to us here. So let's look at wavelength first. Now, wavelength is not going to come from the time graph. Wavelength is going to come from the distance graph. And so I should be able to get that. I'm going to go ahead and just start here at the middle. It needs to go down, up, and then down again. I'm going to go ahead and go through another cycle, down, up, and down again. And I'm going to go through one more cycle, down, up, and down again. And I noticed that I went through three cycles in four meters. And so I'm just going to take that four meters and divide by the three cycles. And so I get 1.33 meters, and that's going to be my wavelength. So the wavelength equals 1.33 meters. That's the length of one of those cycles. All right. You might have been able to estimate that from the beginning here, but easier to just count up the exact four meters and then divide by those three cycles. Okay, let's move on to frequency. So frequency has to do with time, which means we're actually going to get the frequency from the other graph, from this guy over here. We want to use the graph that has time in it. So I'm looking at this graph, and I can see that if I start up here at the top, I can go through one, two three, four, five cycles. And that looks, I, you know, I, it's, I can't really get a very good time there, but I'm gonna go ahead and estimate that right there. That looks like it's almost right in the middle. So I'm gonna go about 3.5, and this is an estimation. But I went through one, two, three, four, five cycles in 3.5 seconds. So I'm gonna take that 3.5 seconds, divide by five cycles, and I'm gonna get 0 0.7 seconds per cycle. Now, you may say, oh, but that's not frequency. You're right, that is the period. That's the amount of time for one cycle. Now, I can get the frequency, of course, from that because we know that the frequency is equal to one over the period. And so if I just do one divided by that 0 0.7, then I get an answer of a frequency which is 1.43 hertz. The amplitude I can get from either graph, right? Because the one on the right shows one particle over time and it shows its amplitude. The one over on the left, I can see the whole graph just as a snapshot of that wave. And they both give me basically the same answer, which is that the amplitude is about 1.5 meters. And now I'm down to the speed. And the speed, of course, comes from V equals frequency times wavelength. And I got the frequency earlier. That was 1.43. And the wavelength was 1.33. So if I take those two and I multiply them together, then I should get my answer, which is about 1.9 meters per second. So there we got the speed. So there, there we were able to fall, find every single one of those pieces based off of the two graphs that we saw together there. So I hope that was interesting. Hope it was helpful. Hopefully it made some connections. Maybe you're seeing some connections between this and your math class. So now I invite you to go do a little bit of practice. See if you can try some more questions dealing with waves and graphs. All right.